Michelle. Hi, Gita. How are you today? I'm great. So, Michelle, tell us who you are. How did you become the artist that you are today? Well, um, my name is Michelle Tappen Davis. Uh, I'm an artist. I am a Trinidadian woman, Tobagonian. I love my, my Twin Island state. I am passionate about my art, about making art. It's what makes me happy. I thoroughly enjoy what I do. What is your main inspiration? What actually makes your creative juices flow? I would say that what really inspires me is the play of, of light and shadow, that interplay. It's a beautiful thing to see the, the contrast between light and dark. We can't know what light is without the darkness and vice versa. To see it at work in nature is a wonderful thing. And I see it particularly when I'm looking at the human form. I think it's the most gorgeous thing that was ever created. It's one of my favorite things to draw and to paint. If I'm doing a landscape, for example, I would be sure to include the human figure in it. It's, it's one of the things that, um, that motivates me to make my art. You know how a dog like spins around like it's trying to bite its own tail? Yeah. yeah, that's how I am before I begin a piece of work. I will do all of that. I would spin around the house. I would clean up my space. It's got to have a certain energy if I'm working in studio. Mm. If I'm working outdoors, on the other hand, I would just get into it because I would draw from the energy of the subjects that are out there. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to start drawing people, especially if I'm working with pen and ink, I, which I love. It's a, if it's a nice, you know, flowing ink. And because I'm trying to capture everything before the subject moves, because the situation out there is very dynamic. Um, in our terms, we call it working en plein air. So I might, I'll be outdoors and I'm capturing the scenario that's going on there. And the energy remains in the work. There's something special about work that's done on site um, rather than work that is done from a photograph. That energy is almost palpable. And I think it's one of the things that helps to sell a piece as well. Traditionally, my style has been very representational. You know, a tree looks like a tree, a house looks like a house. But um, I want to get into more, not abstract, but more conceptual work where there will be um, certain metaphors within the pieces. What type of media do you prefer when creating your art pieces? Right now I'm very much in love with drawing. I've been doing a lot of drawing. Um, I also paint as well. Um, oils are really my forte, but I'm kind of impatient. So <laughs> acrylics, I've been using acrylics a lot more because they're faster drying. Um, and for my way of painting, which would be a lot of plein air work, um, it's good to have a fast drying medium when you're working outdoors, you know? So that's what I prefer. Although I do enjoy experimenting, huh? I do enjoy experimenting. I've done a bit of sculpture, a bit of weaving, but for the most part, my work is two-dimensional. I'm doing a, a series of pen and ink work that will be black and white, um, and that it would help me to focus on other things, um, like texture and uh, um, compositional, issues as well, without the distraction of color. Tell us a bit about your style. What is the style that really resonates with you? I remember my art teacher at Holy Name Convents um, putting a ban on us um, from using the color black because she said that it was too easy to create dark values using the color black. So, we were forced to learn how to mix colors. And I'm really thankful for that because um, 
I really developed that skill of achieving um, various values of color without relying on black. So I can have a, a wide color palette just using the primaries alone and probably white. Um, within recent times, however, very recent times, after so many years, I've started introducing black into my paintings. So that would be one change that would be observable as well. Traditionally, black has had negative connotations in society. So it's not just about the color as a pigment or the color or the absence of light or the ink representing the absence of light. Um, it's about that identity associated with the color black as well. You know, the connotation. And um, I want to embrace that as a thing of beauty. As an artist in Trinidad and Tobago, what has been your experience in selling or marketing your art pieces? I produce art um, that takes a certain uh, creative energy. I'm a right brain person. Marketing is kind of left brain. <laughs> and sometimes it's difficult to marry the two. So I think artists really need someone to help them to market their work. We try to be self-sufficient, but you need to be really dedicated to something to do it well. And it's difficult to um, put the kind of energy that is required into marketing your work and at the same time into producing the work. Let's talk about your recent role as the president of the Women in Art organization. I'm the fourth president of the Women in Art Organization of Trinidad and Tobago. It was founded about 22 years ago by Mrs. Fraulein Rudder, and she has left a wonderful legacy. We have over 70 members in the organization right now, and it's made up mostly of women, although I've recently introduced associate membership for men as well as children under 18, both boys and girls. Um, this organization is really dedicated towards the promotion and support of women artists at both a professional and an amateur level. Um, and the reason is that women artists traditionally have been marginalized in a lot of ways, um, not just in Trinidad, but throughout the world. And they have particular concerns. And I think that we play an important role in giving them the support that they need. How do you see the collaboration between Getting to Know the Artist series and Women in Art organization Bridging the gap between the existing experience and challenges of marketing artwork for the new and upcoming and existing artists of today. I think the program of getting to know the artists will be invaluable in assisting the members of the organization um, to promote themselves and their work because they would be able to devote a lot of their energy into creating art instead of um, expending some of that energy into marketing. Artists don't only need to have their work seen, but they need to make a living as well. So as attached as they may be to their work, it, they need to let it go in order to make their, their livelihood. You know, I've always um, been motivated and encouraged by the knowledge that I was given a talent by God, not to hide it in a hole in the ground, um, but to use it to make my livelihood. So, yeah, I want to sell my work, and I would be happy um, to work with anyone who's willing to assist me in that regard. 
Buying art is not just a purchase. It's a investment in actually the story behind the art. Let's talk about how this series can make artists more relatable. With social media, there's that um, spontaneity. People might just say off the top of their heads what they feel at the moment, but it may not necessarily be um, an in-depth reflection of who they are. So um, I think for sure a program such as Getting to Know the Artist would offer a much deeper um, insight to prospective buyers as to um, what makes this particular person uh, tick, what, is, what are the concepts behind their work. It's always a challenge for the layperson to just look at a piece without ever having met the artist and try to figure out, well, what was he thinking? What was she thinking? You know, I had that experience with one of my students who died last year, um, tragically. He died at the age of 21. He was an excellent student, a scholarship winner, and a beautiful person. I remember when he was in uh, Form 5 about to submit his work for his exams um, and he handed me uh, some of his SBA pieces and when I saw it I immediately shrunk from the pieces because of the feeling that it generated within me. I, I wasn't aware of it at the time. I couldn't put my finger on it. Um, and it's only in hindsight now, when I, when I looked at the pieces within recent times, it hit me, oh my gosh, how did I not see this? When I looked at the work, I saw that it reflected loneliness and pain because he is rumored to have died from a suicide. Oh dear. And when you look at the, at first we doubted, you know, we said, oh, he was not that kind of person. But when you look at the work, there's this common thread of pathos and loneliness. And I kept asking the question over and over. This question is echoing in my brain. What were you trying to say? And he's no longer here. He's no longer here to answer that question. So, you know, it is getting to know the artist is going to be so invaluable to people like that. And I can see the deep emotion that's bringing from you. And, you know, whether it be... You have to give me a moment. Sorry. <laughs> we have so many instances of movie stars, um, cultural icons in other parts of the world committing suicide. And people think that they know them, but they don't. Right. So a program such as this would play a vital role in filling that void.